Right, welcome ladies and gents. I've done a few videos now on Doctor Who and obviously it's massive decline in ratings, viewership, etc. Uh, but part of why I think it's been so important to do these videos is because the BBC, who's Doctor Who's creator, is on the brink. Like they just don't, they're spending money frivolously. It's actually why they partnered up with Disney. Now a lot of people will say Disney didn't partner, you know, they, they didn't partner with the BBC, they're just distributing it in terms of, you know, they've got exclusive rights, they can show it on their streaming platform. Yeah, true, but they've got creative control. They are literally test screening it to audiences and giving notes on how to change stuff to better please their audience. Not the BBC's audience, but Disney's audience. Now, that is telling because the BBC is absolutely wrecked. Uh, and the BBC, in a new report, has come out and told their news arm, which was at one point massively regarded worldwide, it's a lump of shit now, that, uh, yeah, money's really tight. In fact, it's uh, more tight than any year in recent times. Hmm. Spending too much money on propaganda shite then, aren't you, really? So let's dive into this today. It's very, very relevant to Doctor Who. It's very relevant to the greater entertainment industry at large and relevant to anyone that watches the BBC. So BBC News Year message or News New Year message to staff. Money is tighter than in any recent times. Like I said, this is relevant when we're directly comparing it to things like Doctor Who because Doctor Who, I don't think anyone would have ever dreamed of Doctor Who appearing on Disney Plus, right? If, if obviously Disney Plus didn't exist, but 10 years ago, let's just say it did, or people would have crystal ball into the future. You'd probably scoff at that. What are you talking about? How bizarre. And the BBC sold this as it, well, you know, it's going to be so good. We're going to have a you know, bigger budget. It's you know, greater freedom. going to be Marvel-esque, actually, was what they, they sold it as. Marvel-esque, they were going to have loads of spin-off shows and a whole Doctor Who universe was quite literally how they sold it. But the reason why they've had to partner with Disney is, again, they've got no money. No one cares about Disney. Uh, well, no one cares about the BBC. No one cares about Disney either, FYI. But both brands on the huge decline, they're going to go down together, like Hindenburg, I guess. Um, so anyway, look, exclusive to Deadline, BBC News has started the year with a sober reminder for staff. Money will be tight. Jonathan Munro, BBC News Deputy CEO and Director of Journalism. Sorry, what? What journalism does the BBC do anymore? Utter nonsense. Emailed colleagues on Wednesday to warn that significant funding has already been committed to elections, wars and major sports events. Sorry? How do you know where you're going to be wanting to distribute finances? Here's a peek behind the curtain, by the way, guys. I think this stuff is fascinating. There's also two arms to the BBC, by the way. It's important to point out. There is a like a BBC Studios, which is uh, like a production arm where they sell advertising, and sell products elsewhere. And then there's the BBC, which is the one which is funded by the UK taxpayer, basically via the TV licence. But isn't it interesting how the very start of the year... They can email out and say, look, our budget, as funding's really tight, actually, because we've already allocated it to things. We, we, you know, we know exactly what we're allocating money to. Isn't that odd? Doesn't that strike you as very strange that you can sort of pre-suppose where this cash flow is going to be needed? I think so. You could, you could almost guess in a roundabout way, but the fact that you're, you're, you're so much so where you're warning people, yeah, money's going to be tight, that's very strange to me. I think that's very strange. And I know loads of people will probably accuse me of conspiracy theories and sort of that sort of element. No, I just think it's naivety to say that that's not odd. Sports events, that makes sense, right? There's a set calendar for sports events. Is there a set calendar for wars? There shouldn't be. Is there a set calendar for elections? Well, sort of. But how would you know what amount you're going to need to cover? Well, we know why, don't we? Two elections this year, or likely to be this year, that will cause a lot of controversy. Or at least as they start to ramp it up anyway. So the news bonanza, coupled with the BBC's need to find an additional... Sorry, what's that? 90 million in savings? 90 million pounds in savings you need to make? 
On top of ongoing content cuts means that the BBC News will have to be judicious in its spending. Love it. It's got nothing to do with stuff like this, has it? You know, loads of complaints about things. It's got nothing to do with that, no? No. No, no, nothing to do with any of these things. Massive complaints. No, of course not. So anyway, Munro said, undoubtedly more of our cash is uh, earmarked up front than in any year in recent times. Why? That's so odd. And bearing in mind, we do know, as an FYI, that, and, and I'm going to go out and say it, and this will, you know, loads of people will say conspiracy theory. But if they're out and out saying, yeah, most of our cash, cash is earmarked more than any other time, right? Isn't it oddly coincidental that that statement coincides with the fact that, you know, trust in media, mainstream legacy media, is at an all-time low? I would say that they're spending more money now, they're having to spend more money on their sort of coercive tactics on getting people to be gullible and just believe every word they say. So they says, we're going to need some patience. We won't be able to back every idea or service every request. The bar for discretionary spending will have to rise at least for the next 12 months. So in the message seen by Deadline, he added, every pound, dollar or rupee we spend has got to contribute to the heavy lifting which is needed throughout the year. Let's not get disheartened by that. It's simple housekeeping. How bizarre. All this language is so bizarre. So one insider summed up the email like this. I think this means BBC News is skint. Yeah, broke. So BBC News is in the process of making its late, latest round of content cuts under a £7.5 million saving plan. Nearly $10 million. So Newsnight has been hit hard by the cuts with plans to strip the flagship current affairs show of its original report and then shorten its episodes. And this is important to note as well, by the way, is they, they, they give extortionate salaries to their staff who genuinely, no word of a lie, pull in less views than my channel does. And they would earn hundreds of thousands of pounds. And they'd pull in less views than my channel. That's speaking volumes, right? So insiders feel ground down by the cuts and there is a feeling that BBC News is in perpetual contraction. It never ends, said one source. You get through a round of cuts and then it starts all over again. Yeah, because you're dog shit. Monroe remained upbeat, saying that the 2024 news cycle will play to our strengths. How bizarre. How will it play to your strengths, huh? He pointed to the BBC's emphasis on verification at a time when potentially overlapping elections in the UK and US could flood social media feeds with misinformation and disinformation. What, like all that stuff you said about the pandemic? That was misinformation and disinformation, wasn't it? You've been called out by everyone for that dog shit. Oh, there you go. Doctor Who. The people behind Doctor Who. And this, this is indicative of the channel or the channels the company as a whole that's why it's important to know and that's why they needed disney's help but anyway guys let me know your thoughts down below i'd love to hear it so drop it down below in the comments if you're new here do hit subscribe turn the bell notifications on and if you like what i do here as opposed to not liking the bbc please do check out my patreon link down below in the description box uh, consider supporting it really does help out and uh, yeah it's strongly needed sometimes because hey I pull in, uh, you know, more views than the BBC, but I earn significantly less. So it's a bit shit. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye-bye now.